Welcome to the Wide World of Wayne podcast. I am Wayne Viner, and in a little bit, we're going to have Jack Rothenberg, who hangs out in the press box for us during the football games. You've seen him on the post-game show. You've seen the articles he's written. They're up on TerpTalk.com. He is immersed for this season in sort of the Mason role from last year and the years before with the Maryland Terrapins. And then we're going to talk a little Nats, because he's a big Nats guy, and look for the best moments out of a 9 nothing Redskins lost the 49ers yesterday. Looking at a Maryland game on Saturday night, they lose 34-28, could have won the game. And I think that's a, a something that's a little hard to take, is they really could have won this game. Had the same feeling after Maryland played Temple, they could have won the game. Uh, either you get a good, middle-to-good Maryland or an awful Maryland. This was a better version of Maryland. Guys on the defense said they just didn't start fast enough. Indiana came out like a house of fire. It looked like it was going to be a real shootout. And in the second half, the game calmed down. If you're looking for the highlights or lowlights, look, Javon Leak was a highlight. Antoine Brooks at safety was a highlight. Piggy had moments. Dante Demas another kid who was a highlight as a number one receiver. Overall, you know, Maryland just isn't big enough up front. They still don't look like a Big Ten team. If you squinted your eyes really hard at that game, you'd think you were watching a, a game from 10 years ago. Maybe it was NC State at Maryland back in the ACC. Maryland has these great skill players, but they just don't have the beef. They don't bring the heavy hitters in the middle. Quite frankly, the Terps have two guys who might play inside linebacker on most teams, and they line up as defensive ends. And that's Keandre Jones on one side, where's number four, and Shaq Smith, where's number five, and he plays on the right side. And when you play on the right side of the defensive line, that means you're crashing headlong into the best offensive lineman that the other team has, their left tackle, generally the best offensive lineman. So you're taking a guy who's a mid-sized linebacker, and he runs into a guy who's 330 pounds in every play. So the fact they're not overly successful with that is not the greatest shock. Usually Maryland just has two defensive linemen on the field and four or five linebackers, and then everybody else is a defensive back, and Antoine Brooks is the swing guy. They have to get bigger. Uh, I'm going to something that just, it's overly apparent when you're on the field that Maryland needs to get bigger. They need defensive linemen who look like defensive linemen. They need more depth on the offensive line. They need to get bigger. They also need a, di a Division I Power 5 quarterback. You know, Piggy might or might not be the answer. All right, he's not the answer. I'm not really sure about Josh Jackson. If he's in one piece, he's going to be the starter at Minnesota. Minnesota's having a fantastic start to this year. They're undefeated. Maryland now at 3-4. and four. They need a win somewhere, but are they going to get to 6? I really doubt it. Well, Jack, despite the fact that Maryland lost, you got to do some cool interviews, and I know that you talked to Javon Leak after the game. Uh, what did he have to say about his pretty spectacular performance? He didn't really comment on his uh, performance there after that game. He was more focused on the loss and the fact that they just lost to a pretty beatable Indiana team, even though he had a great game with over 100 rushing yards and over 200 scrimmage yards. He was pretty disappointed with how they played late there in the game. And the other guy that I think we both saw a little bit was Piggy, and Piggy looked like he was gonna, it was he was gonna cry. He he was very depressed by what happened out there. It's another game where the ball was in his hands near the end, and it just didn't work out. Um, and then I got to move on and talk to Antoine Brooks Jr. He often gets to come out when Maryland loses. The other guy they put out there a lot on defense when Maryland loses is uh, Keandre Jones. It's got to be a really tough gig to come out and have a media horde chasing you down when you just lost a game that you thought you could win. But Antoine Brooks, he can ball. When he is put in the right position, he can make tackles. He attacks offenses. He has pro potential. And now he's not a lineman. He's somewhere between a small linebacker and a big safety. 
But look, Darnell Savage sort of played that role for Maryland in the past. He starts for the Green Bay Packers. Antoine Brooks can start at the next level. Now, I don't want to beat the Maryland football thing to death. No, I don't think they're going to win six games at this point. Yes, I did earlier. You know, drank too much of the Kool-Aid. I probably have Kool-Aid stains on all my clothes from, from watching Maryland and, and buying into this. But it's really important that they finish this well. And yeah, they're only three and four. You got five games left. Just don't go out there and suck. I want them to go out and play hard. I want to be proud of this. Whether they win or not, I was I was happier than I was after the Purdue game. After Maryland loses to Indiana, just because the effort was there. And maybe the quarterback is on the roster. Maybe it's Lance Lejean. He wears number four. He's the super freshman. He got in a couple of the games early on. They're not going to throw him out there at this point. They're going to stick with a piggy. Or if Josh can go at Minnesota, that's what you're going to see. But my overall take is Maryland has skill positions. I think they're going to keep recruiting that, but they've got to recruit better on the offensive and defensive lines, or this is going to be a movie that gets repeated year after year. So that's the bad news. But for you, and not necessarily for me, there's good news. you got the World Series tomorrow night. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm really excited. It should be a, a great series with some great pitchers, including Max Scherzer, Steven Strasburg. Well, on the Houston side, you got Zach Granke and uh, Justin Verlander, a couple of Cy Young winners. Um, we'll see what happens. It should be a pretty low-scoring game, but no, uh, definitely great games. So the Nats get rid of Bryce Harper. The Astros get rid of Dallas Keuchel. Both of them go on to star for the teams that they signed up with. And the Nats and the Astros just keep rolling along. Who do you think actually has the advantage in this series? I definitely think Houston has the advantage, even though uh, the Nationals pitchers have been pitching very well, especially in that Cardinals series. But uh, Houston's batters are definitely a lot stronger than uh, the Nationals, especially because Houston has the combination of the batters and the pitchers. And even though the Nationals have Anthony Rendon and Juan Soto, they still don't have the full lineup that the Astros put out there each night. Well, the Nats do get to play a little bit in the DH League. The first two games is going to feature the designated hitter at Houston. Who do you think is going to get that role for Washington? I think it could be a combination of maybe Brian Dozier or Estrubal Cabrera. Just depends on who's pitching, you know, like the lefty-righty matchups mm -hmm. or just the matchups maybe career-wise. It, it could all just depend on who's pitching for the Astros at that point. Would you uh, – so there's Matt Adams who could do that. He's the backup first baseman. You also could get Howie Kendrick in as the DH and bring in some better defense at second base. As much of a star, and I love Howie, as much of a shooting star as he is, uh, is not quite the defensive specialist that you want to have out there. Would you rather have Howie DH and get a lesser bat in like a Dozier, or would you rather leave Howie out in the field to play second base and use a Matt Adams as your DH? Which way would you go? Yeah, I think that's an interesting point there because we saw Howie Kendrick – uh, early in the playoffs, make a couple errors in that Dodgers series. I still think just from uh, the wins that they've had against the Cardinals and the Dodgers, I think you might just want to stick with the same lineup with Howie in at second base. But I could definitely see them put Brian Dozier out at second for that defensive lineup and put Howie Kendrick in that DH spot. I could definitely see that. Okay, you guys, your family, you go to a lot of games. Anybody have World Series tickets? Uh, I do not, at the moment, have World Series tickets, um, but I might go to a couple of the watch parties. We'll see uh, if the weather holds out, but I, as, of, as of now, I do not have any World Series tickets. All right. I was thinking of just going to go, which is a Bruce thing, because it's the World Series, it's in Washington. Whether I'm really hyped for it or not, eh, but it's something you might never get to see again here. You never know what's going to happen. But after looking at some of the $800, $900 tickets, I said, you know, maybe I'll just sit this one out. Obviously, we do not have credentials, 
for baseball, we just have them for everything else. In the everything else column, the Redskins, for the very fast game yesterday, played on a horrible field at FedEx Field, and they lose 9 nothing, and they almost won the game. Do you see that? that, that except for a missed field goal and a fumble, you could have had one of the bigger upsets this year. For sure, I think. Uh, the offense just couldn't get the ball moving. You see Case Keenum had under 100 yards passing. Even though it was a rainy day, you still only had 81 rushing yards from starting running back Adrian Peterson. But I just think the uh, Redskins couldn't capitalize. Uh, they had that interception from Troy Apke, the safety out of Penn State. Boo. But, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, San Francisco just took advantage with the uh, – the three running backs they have in Coleman, Brita, and Wilson, and Garoppolo kind of managed the game once they got in the lead uh, early in the third. I am Wayne Viner. That's Jack Rothenberg, and we are live from the Viner Fourgate Studios in Rockville. If you need computer help for your business, inventory systems, servers, a new website, e-commerce, Viner Fourgates is the place to go. You will be served by Terps. You'll have Terrapins come out to your business and help you solve your business issues. Call Viner Fourgates at 301-251-2900, or you can find them on the web at oneviner.com. That's the numeral one, V as in victory, I-E-N-E-R.com, 301-251-2900 in Rockville. Jack, the season for the Redskins is more over than the season is for Maryland. Do you have any feelings one way or the other whether they should get the ball to Terry McLaurin more? That's number one. And number two, do you see any danger in playing uh, Dwayne Haskins at quarterback as opposed to staying with Case Keenum? Yeah, I definitely think they should feed the ball to Terry McLaurin more, especially because there's not really much to lose here, especially uh, only getting him injured, I guess. But with the season basically over and their playoff hopes not really existent, I think just why not try and give the ball to Terry McLaurin more. And as for Dwayne Haskins, I definitely think he should sit the rest of the year. You've heard from numerous people around the league that he's just not ready you, you heard that from Jay Gruden before he got fired. And I think Case Keenum, with how the season's going now, he's doing perfectly fine. And I just I don't think there's any, any reason to risk putting him in there and getting him a little bit beat up when he's your franchise quarterback for the future. Well, he's got to play sooner or later. And now that Chase Roulier and Scherf are back out there, and they pretty much have their starters and starters for the Redskins from left to right, Donald Pennant left tackle, Eric Flowers, formerly of the Giants, at left guard. Chase Rulli is the center. At the right guard is Brandon Scherf, and at the right tackle is Morgan Moses. That's as good as this is going to get right now. In fact, it might even be better because all they have now are pass-blocking tight ends, so there's a little extra help. If he can't play, and, and I really it's hard to hear that the number 15 draft pick can't actually get on the field, but, you know, you're right. Jay Gruden said he can't play. Callahan said he's not ready. The new offensive play caller, which I think is Matt LaFleur, said he's not ready. Everybody you ask says he's not ready. I'm not sure how you're going to get ready if you never play. And in case in case you go 1-15, what's it matter? If you go 2-14, and 14, eh, if you go 3... Yeah, they're not going to get more than four wins. So one way or the other, he needs, I, I would think that he needs the experience of getting out there. Now, maybe they don't want to just hand him the job, but I got to believe that he's better than a Case Keenum or a Colt McCoy right now because at least he can throw, I think he can throw the deep ball. It might be the only thing he can do. And the guys do seem to like him. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. But I, I can see your point that you don't want to ruin the kid. On the other hand, if you'd have no clue if he can really play, and you do end up one in fifteen or two and fourteen, and you have to decide whether or not you want to take Tua, whether you want to take uh, Fields 
from Ohio State, whether you want uh, Justin Herbert from, from Oregon, or you want Chase Young as a rush end from Ohio State, without seeing Dwayne play at all, I think it's going to be a really super hard evaluation. But if that quarterback's there, and it's Tua, I think the Redskins are still going to take him, and we'll figure out what happens. Then you'll have two first-round draft pick quarterbacks, and just have to go on from there. Could you see that happening, considering how screwed up the Redskins are? I could definitely see that happening with uh, Dan Snyder last year totally taking over the draft and not really incorporating anyone else's opinion. I definitely don't think that's the way that they should go, though, especially because my opinion on Dwayne Haskins is solely based off of what I've heard from other people. But Dwayne Haskins said himself he's fine reading NFL defenses, so I'm not really sure what he's not ready with. But I definitely don't think they should go quarterback next year in the or this year actually in the draft. Um, but yeah, I think they should either go Chase Young, as you said, maybe an outside rusher. Or maybe get the offensive line some help. You see with Trent Williams holding out, maybe you replace him with Donald Penn, pretty old. Get a new left tackle in there. Yeah, they're going to have to get some new guys. They're going to have to figure out who they really want to pay. And in the last couple moments here, you do have to realize, and I know everybody thinks that Dan sucks, and he does, but the Redskins have their franchise-level tight end. Jordan Reed, he's never going to play again. They have their 20-something million dollar a year quarterback in Smith. He might never play again. They have their franchise level left tackle, as you just mentioned, Trent Williams. He's never going to play as a Redskin again. That's a lot of money to be tied up and have zero productivity from that. But those are probably, other than Landon Collins and Kerrigan, those that's your highest paid people and there's no zero productivity from them so you have to figure out how much you want to play pay brandon scherf with how old he is and and everybody else and just do you do a complete rebuild here or do you try and i know the redskins always do just try and add one or two pieces and maybe they'll be better next year and i i hope i really hope that bruce allen and danny aren't thinking well if we can get alex smith back even the rumors that he might play again are disturbing. He's had 17 surgeries to be able to walk, and they're talking like they're going to put him out on a football field again. I think you've got to be out of your mind. But, you know, that's just an opinion, and I don't own the team, and, uh, and neither do you. But would you give Alex Smith another go at quarterback, or do you think you've seen enough? Um, I'm not really sure. I, I think I would have to see him maybe in practice a little more. But especially with them drafting Dwayne Haskins, I don't see how they would want to put him back out there, especially if Alex Smith can't play for another couple years, maybe next year. Dwayne Haskins should hopefully be ready by then. I don't see the reason to need to put him back out there when Dwayne Haskins, or if they draft another quarterback, they should be ready instead of him. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode of The Wide World of Wayne. And, of course, we'd like to thank Viner Forgates and the Young Terps. Always nice to have a Young Terps call out. They have a, the best Maryland-only podcast, number one rated Maryland-only podcast. And you can listen to that on TerpTalk.com. And I'd like to do this again on Friday after the Redskins travel to the Vikings. I'll be out there for that one. And I'll be hanging out in Minneapolis waiting for Maryland taking on the Golden Gophers on Saturday at 3.30. Jack, thanks for joining in. No problem. Thank you for having me. And remember to listen to Terp Talk on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. The Sports Maven is on 9 a.m. on Saturdays, and that will preview the Maryland-Minnesota game also on CBS Sports Radio. And then for you Ravens fans, In the Nest, sponsored by Science and Kirk. Although this week there's a London game, so In the Nest will be on immediately after the Sports Maven, and that will be on 10 a.m. on 1300 CBS Sports Radio in Baltimore. And as always, thanks for listening.